Hey everybody, I wanted to give you a little bit of an update. I've gotten quite a few emails about people talking about how all, all these joints on the fuselage are made, the, and they're called the cope, like coping. And it's, it's gotten a little bit frustrated because some of the emails I get are just like, you know, all you gotta do is make one or two templates and you're go, good, to go, good to go on the airplane. So I wanted to do this little demonstration here to show you the different degrees that these uh, uh, half inch 4130 chrome molly is running into the 5 8 inch chrome molly. So, you know, back here we got 35 degrees, 27, 68, 60, 47, 39, 54, 46, 54, 47, and 51. Now, the 54s, they're close enough. The 47 and 46, well, the 47, that's close enough. So if I wanted to, you know, I've done both the copings where I've done the paper template. They're the ones that you print online and, and I mean, you design online and print. And then you've got the 3D ones that I printed with my 3D printer. But the problem is, is these top joints are all center. So these copes, let's see if this lines up, it's close enough. So this cope right here is designed to go on the center axis of the pipe, not all off to the side. Okay, now I could 3D print that and spend a lot of time doing it. But on the top here, these are uh, all set so that they end up making a, a perfect V into the 5 8 inch uh, tubing at the top. So. I guess the thing I'm trying to point out here is that there is hardly any two degrees, angles that are the same. So the way that I figured out to do this, and honestly, it works really well, I basically lay a piece of tubing up here. I look at it here. I'll mark what this plane is going to be, but I mark it so that at least half the pipe, half this tubing is up this tubing here, actually, let me grab a piece of tubing and show you. Um, so let's say this is one of the pipes I'm going to, I mean, one of the tubings I'm going to cut. So I'll hold it up here and I'll make sure that this tubing is at least halfway up through the center axis of this tube here. And then I'm going to mark it. Then what I'll do is, and let's say I've marked that. Okay, so let's say I've got a mark on there. I'll go to my bandsaw and I'm going to cut that off. So now I know I've got this angle correct. Then I just take my hand grinder and grind a slight radius in there until this fits. Then I come down here, I'll do the same mark down here. I always leave it so that it hits the center axis of that tube. Because if you do it at the top, it'll be too short. You got to have, this tube's got to have a radius that fits over the other tube. So um, this isn't going to be a long video. I'm going to do four or five videos today. It's Saturday at like 5.20 a.m. That says 6.20. I forgot to set the clock in here with a time change last week. But this just gives you a demonstration of all the different angles that are going on to the rear of this fuselage. And I'm super excited because um, over the last week and three days, I've gotten all of this done. The jig for this has held everything perfectly in alignment. I'm still within about an eighth of an inch or a couple of millimeters. I keep getting beat up. I want to go metric on everything because it's just so much easier. But uh, all the drawings for this were um, imperial or whatever the hell you want to call it, American. And uh, uh, but hopefully this gives you an understanding of just all the different angles that are involved in this fuselage. And I'm only talking about the ones right here. I'm not talking about these crossbars in the bottom because those had their all individual. I think I added up there's 38 different angles in just the fuselage tubing. So uh, as you can see back here, I've got another jig set up. I'm getting ready to actually start building the, uh, basically the back of the seat where the wing attaches on the top. And then a, a tube comes down here and splits out. This tube right here that becomes a Y fork will probably be something that I uh, actually make a mock-up of to make sure I can make it right. And if it turns out perfect, then I'll go ahead and weld it up and use it as a part of the airframe. But 
you know, I've actually gone into AutoCAD and drawn some of this out so I can print out full size templates to lay things on to just really have my head wrapped around it. And um, so I'm going to have another video here later today. I just need to get together all of my data. It's about the power plant and some of the uh, emails I've gotten, uh, which are absolutely amazing because I don't want to start any fights, but I can create a column of where people say this is the way to do it. And then a column of people say that's absolutely rubbish. You don't want to do it that way. So it's, it's, I don't want to say it's frustrating, but it's, it, it's, it's interesting how many experts there are out there. Okay. So, um, and I try to keep the peace, everybody. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, oh, one last thing. I did get a really neat email from a uh, instructor or professor, whatever you want to call him at a welding school. And he wrote me some really neat information about welding this stuff. And one of the things that he talked about though, that I thought was really comical was he says, you know, Damon, when people go to YouTube and see all these people TIG welding, what do they all have in common? They're all taking two pieces of metal that are aluminum that are usually at least a quarter inch thick and they're running straight beads. And he said, if my students in a month can't run a straight bead with a TIG welder, laying what looks, you know, kind of like the dimes, he says, and that doesn't matter. That's just people being precise and having a rhythm to the way that they're TIG welding. He says, if my students can't do that, you know, in a month, I, I would be really, really upset once they start TIG welding. But he says, welding the 0.035 wall thickness chromoly, he says, takes a lot of time to understand the temperature and the pedal, the, the you know, how fast you need to, to move the torch. And, you know, he said that, you know, don't beat yourself up because you're taking on welding some really hard material for somebody who's pretty much a novice at TIG welding. And he was pretty colorful in his email where he's talked about, you know, anybody can weld quarter inch steel with a TIG welder without burning through it because he said, basically, you'll need to melt down Chernobyl to be able to go through half inch steel, but to go through 0.035 uh, chromoly, he says, even he's made mistakes where he burned through. So um, uh, I thought that was really interesting. It made me feel really good because I do have a kind of a level of frustration when I'm welding this fuselage and I post a picture and somebody tells me the weld looks like shit. You've seen my other weld. I mean, my other video where I tested my welds, the welds were stronger than the steel. So, you know, I feel really comfortable with how this is turning out right now. I'm, I'm super excited. And, um, uh, I'm going to make a couple of more videos today, everybody. So everybody have a great day, rock on and aviate everybody, get people involved with aviation. I feel like it's becoming like the steam engine, but there's still a lot of people that love steam engines. So take it easy, everybody. Have a great day and be safe. Thank you.